everyone. I hope that this is working. If you could please comment and we'll see if this is all, um, hello. <laughs> um, if you could please comment just to make, just so I know that it's all working. Um, I hope that you're looking forward to joining me for a Silver Swans Ballet class on this very, very hot day today. Um, I know it, whenever I've been doing these Silver Swans sessions, I always seem to have it on a very hot day. Um, so uh, just a reminder, please make sure you've got lots of water, you know, take a break. Um, and I'll put in some water breaks along the way, but if you need extra ones, then please do. Um, um, I'll just talk a little bit about Silver Swans just before we get started. Um, Silver Swans is an initiative of the Royal Academy of Dance and they are ballet classes specifically designed for the over 55s. It's a very gentle ballet class. Um, today's session is actually going to be suitable for absolute beginners so it really doesn't matter if you've never done a ballet class ever before. Um, I'll be explaining everything right from the start. Um, just before we do start, just check that the space around you is safe, um, that it's clear of any obstacles, that there's nothing you can trip over, um, also that your flooring is suitable and also that your footwear is correct as well. Um, it's important that you don't push beyond your capabilities and you know what's safe for you to do um, and especially as well in the hot weather today, if you feel as though you need a break, um, you know, you can always just sit down and watch the rest of the session. Um, these sessions are always put on YouTube afterwards. You can always get them back in the virtual village hall on Facebook or like I said they do get put on YouTube. You can actually watch three of my other sessions on YouTube. Um, the first two are just a general ballet class. Uh, the first one did a little bit from Swan Lake in there um, and the last session that I did was based on Don Quixote um, and you need a fan for that one. Today we're going to be theming today's session on Romeo and Juliet which is actually my favourite ballet. Okay, so um, we're actually going to be learning a little extract from the Dance of the Nights, which some of you, um, this music is probably better known as being the theme tune for The Apprentice, which is also um, one of my favourite TV programmes. <laughs> so the, today's programme makes me very happy. We've got Romeo and Juliet and a little bit of The Apprentice in there as well. Um, um, we'll just start off, like I said, with a general ballet class. Um, just getting us warmed up and then at the end of the session we'll learn the repertoire. Okay, so um, I think we'll get started then. Just make sure you've got lots of space to move around in. If you don't have enough space for this opening warm up, um, then you can just walk on the spot. There's two warm ups that we always start off with. The first one just gets us moving and then the second one is a little bit more just for your feet. Okay, so just find a space and we'll get started with warm up. So just walking around, just follow me along, just follow along with me and um, we'll get going. Okay, so walking around. Swing your arm just while you're walking. You can walk on the spot if you don't have enough space. Okay, so Keep walking around in a circle if you've got lots of space. Now everybody taking your hands up and bring them down. Keep walking in your circle if you've still got enough space. And down. And taking your hands up. And down. And up. Now everybody into the middle. Hands in front. We're just going to bend and stretch. And bend and stretch. Nice big bend. Moving your arms, bend and stretch. Now we're going to sway to the side, it doesn't matter which side. Big bend and stretch, bend and stretch, bend and stretch, and bend and stretch, bend and stretch. One more sway, feet together, and you're just going to breathe in and breathe out. Okay, so that's your first warm up finished now. Now we're going to do our second warm up. So for this session, for this, now we're going to need a ballet bar. Okay, so um, something which works really well as a ballet bar are dining room chairs. You want it to be something really sturdy that you won't wobble over. Um, and really want it to be about the height of your waist as well. So for this second warm up, like I said before, it's all about getting your feet moving. So we're just going to start off with our feet together. I'll talk about how far away you should stand from your bar. So 
because this is important now for the rest of our bar exercises as well. So, if we're too far away from our bar, then your elbows will be straight. If you're too close to your bar, then your elbows will be bent. You want them just to have a nice soft curve. And you want your hands to be as wide apart as your shoulders so that you can keep your posture there. And everything's nice and relaxed and open. You've got a real openness across your chest. And as we're there now, we're also thinking about our posture. So lifting up, we've got a two-way stretch. I'm going to use that little bit of imagery that I've used in the past. Um, because I think it works really well. Imagine that your head is a helium balloon that's trying to float upwards, but your feet are the weight. So it's keeping you very grounded. So we've got this two-way stretch going on, and we've got this openness across our chest and our back, and your arms are nice and relaxed. And all the time, you've just got this lifted feeling. So let's get on with our foot warm-up now. So we're going to go to our demi point. So demi means half. Now, what everything in a ballet class, is in French, so we're learning French as well as ballet today. Um, so we're going to go to our demi point. So demi meaning half, so it's half a point as well. So you want a nice crease across your shoe, and then we'll go to a point. Don't lean on that foot, we're just pointing you. Back to your demi point, and down. Same with the other foot, to a point. We're just getting our toes nice and mobile. Same with the other foot, to a point. Demi point and down, same again, to a point demi point and down. Then we're going to point and flex. So just pointing your foot in front. From here, flex your foot. Really feel as though you're pushing your heel down. And then going to a point and closing in. And point, and flex, and point and closing in. Same again. And flex. Are you still thinking about lifting up? And close, and a point, and flex, and point and closing in. Okay, so we'll give that a go with music now. So feet together, thinking about your posture. So demi point to a point, demi point to a point, demi point and down, same again, to a point, and demi point and down, same again. Really creasing your shoes. Now pointing and flexing, and a point, and flex, and push, closing in, and point, and flex, still lifting up tall. to our first exercises at the bar because obviously we've just been doing a warm-up just to start off with there. So for your ballet bar um, we're going to keep facing it for most of these exercises. Um, as dancers we do tend to start off particularly when we're training um, uh, with, uh, students all the way from uh, the first days at the ballet bar as a young student. Anybody who is new to ballet we always tend to train them first of all starting off at facing the ballet bar so that they can keep everything nice and square. But as the dancer gets more advanced and more used to keeping everything nice and square as a dancing, that's when we'll work more with one hand on the ballet bar. So we'll start off facing the bar just to get used to it a little bit more, because like I said, this session is suitable for absolute beginners today. So I'll first of all explain about the positions of the feet. So if you just stand with your feet together, keeping your heels in contact with each other. Now, if you just turn your toes away from each other. So we don't want to overturn out our feet. We want it to be about a right angle, really. And that is feet in first position, okay? There are actually five positions of the feet in ballet. And this is the main one, okay? So this is your first position. Now, if you keep the same amount of turnout and just put a space between your feet now, so we want our weight to be equal on both legs. We don't want to be leaning on one leg more than the other. And we don't want one foot to be more turned out than the other. They are completely matching. So just take a moment, have a check of your feet. Are they matching? Is your weight in the middle? And that's your second position there. Okay, so we've got first position and we've got second position. Now, from second position, Let's go back to first for a moment, because I'm going to teach you now third position. So if you bring one of your feet in front, doesn't matter which one, it's because we can do a third position with either foot in front. So your heel is going into the middle of your other foot, and that is third position. And like I said, we can have third position with your right foot in front or your left foot in front. It really doesn't matter. It's third position. Okay, so we've got first position. We tend to point our foot whenever we go to a new position. Just check that you've got 
got your weight in the middle there. And then we can point our foot to close into third. So those are the three positions that we're going to use in this first exercise at the bar, which is our plies exercise. Plie means to bend. Now really these are demi plies, there's that word demi again, demi meaning half. So it's half of a bend because there is a step which is a full plie. Okay, so our demi plie. Plie, like I say, just means to bend. Um, so with your feet in first, we're just bending our knees and stretching. So we're making a diamond shape with our legs. Demi plie and stretch. Now something to be careful of in a plie is that you're keeping three points of contact with the floor all the time. So that's your big toe, your little toe and your heel and it's especially your heels which you have to watch out for because they like to pop up off the floor. Okay so keeping your heels on the floor and stretching. The size of the demi plie um, it doesn't matter it's just wherever you can get to without your heels popping up off, off the floor. So whether that's only a small demi plie or whether it's a big demi plie it's just giving a nice gentle stretch. Okay so facing the ballet bar for this exercise feet in first position We'll take three demi plies in first and all the time keep thinking about that helium balloon because even if you were to pull a cord on the helium balloon the balloon is still trying to float upwards and that's the feeling that we want. Even though we're bending we're not sinking into that bend. We're bending but we've still got that lifted feeling. So we're going to do three plies in total. Demi plie and stretch. Demi plie and stretch. One more demi plie and stretch. Now pointing your foot to the side and we're going to go to second position. Take a moment, check that both feet are matching. Same in second. Demi plie and stretch. A second plie and stretch. Keeping your heels in contact with the floor. A third plie and stretch. And then closing that foot in front into third. Same in third, demi plie. And what we really want is our knees to be going over our toes. So we're not putting any excess stress on our knees. Demi plie and stretch. And then at the end, we're just going to close our feet back to first position. Take one hand off the bar. We're going to take it all the way up. Circle it round. Down and place it carefully back onto the bar. And then we'll go with the other hand, just warming up our arms and placing your hand back onto the bar. Okay, so we've done three demi plies in first position second position and third position and then we just finish off with what we call a pour de bras which we will be coming to a little bit later on just moving our arms so the music for this exercise like i said today's theme is romeo and juliet you may recognize this piece of music um, from the film version um, by craig armstrong okay so feet in first position to the front 
and closing it straight in again. Pointing and closing it. So when we're pointing our foot forwards, we want to point it straight forward. Point it in front of your hip and your shoulder. Don't want it going off out to the side or what we call over crossing. Okay, so really nice and straightforward facing your ballet bar. Make sure you get the correct distance away from your bar. Do be careful if you are using a chair that you're not going to bump your feet into the chair legs. Okay, so we're going to use our right leg first. I know you're going to do three back montages. So we're going to go point and a close and two and a close and a three. But on this third one, instead of closing it on straight legs, we're going to go to a bend and then we'll stretch our legs. Okay, so it's the third one we're closing on a bend and then we're slowly stretching. Let's have a go with the other leg. Point and a close and point and a close and the third one goes to a bend and stretching your legs. Now we're going to repeat exactly the same but to the side. So we have a rule in ballet that when we point our foot to the side our big toes are in line with each other. So it's basically going to work very similar to where we were for our second position. So we're going point and a close and two and a close and a third one closes on a bend and stretching your legs and your other leg to the side and close and a point and close and the third one to a bend and slowly stretching your legs. Okay, a little bit of a coordination thing there where we're going to a bend. Um, so like I said, we want to keep our legs nice and straight whenever we're doing a back montage. We don't have any bend in our legs at all. We're just sliding our foot to a point and then we're sliding it back into the first. And then on that third one, we close into a bend and then slowly stretch our legs. So keep swapping which leg you're using. First of all, we go to the front and then we go to the side. Okay, so let's give it a go with music. Feet in first position. Okay, so right foot first, three to the front. Point and close. Two and close. And the third one goes to a bend. Slowly stretch your legs. Other leg. Point and close. And two and close. Third one goes to a bend. Now to the side. And one and close. Two and close. Three to a bend. Slowly stretching your legs. Point and close and point and close and one to a bend and slowly stretch your legs. Okay, good. If you want to just grab yourself a quick drink of water because it is very hot today, I'm just going to quickly go and grab a drink of water. Um, we will continue at the bar, but just keep yourself nice and hydrated for today. Oh, it'd be nice actually if you it would be nice to see whereabouts people are joining in from today um so please write in the comments whereabouts you're joining in these lessons from um i'm up in manchester um very hot manchester although actually the sun has just gone behind a cloud um but it still feels very very hot um so please do write in the comments whereabouts you're enjoying this silver swans lesson from it will be fantastic to hear from you. And also as well, please write on as well what dance experience you've had. Um, is this your very first ever ballet class or have you danced before? Um, it'd be great to hear from you in the comments. Okay, so let's carry on with our bar work now. Um, our next exercise is called Batmon Fondue. Fondue means to melt. Now you're thinking of cheese and chocolate probably right now, um, but also we do have a step called a Batman fondue in ballet as well. Very similar to a demi plie, um, and the important thing about the Batman fondue is that it's um, very gooey and it keeps moving all the time. I always tell my students, think of the inside of a curly whirly chocolate bar, that stretch and that gooeyness, that's what we really want in these Batman fondues, okay? So, facing your ballet bar, we're going to have our feet in third position for this exercise. So what's going to happen is, if we just go into a demi-plie, 
and stretch. That's basically all that's happening. I'll just turn to face the camera for you so that you can see me. So I'm going to a bend and stretch, but as I'm bending, I'm going to lift up my back foot so that my big toe touches my ankle bone. And then as I stretch, I lower that foot down. There's quite a lot of coordination going on there because you're bending, that leg is lifting, and then we're going in the opposite way. So we're bending and lifting that leg, and then we're stretching and pushing it back down again. I'll just turn to face the back so you can actually see what I'm doing with that foot at the back. So as I'm bending, this foot is peeling up so my big toe goes to my ankle bone, and then I stretch and close my leg. So this is a Batman fondue derriere. Because we do can have a step as a devon, which is actually what we did in my very first session in the uh, virtual village hall. We did them all as Batman fondue devon. So facing our belly bar, feet in third position. Now for this, we do want to start a little bit further away from our belly bar than normal because we do travel a bit closer. So we're going to do three Batman fondues derriere. So lifting up your back foot and closing into third. Same again. That one fondue and closing into third. We still want to think of our knees going over our middle toes. Fondue, closing into third. Now that leg that's just been lifting, we're going to point it to the side and close it in front into third. Now you have another leg at the back, so we can use the other leg. So we're doing our fondue derriere and stretching and fondue and stretching. One more you and stretching and pointing and closing in. So you can see what I said about how it keeps moving all the time. What we don't want is that we're dropping into our fondue. It keeps moving all the time. Still thinking about that curly whirly chocolate bar. <laughs> okay, so feet in third position. Make sure you're not too close to your belly bar. Shoulders nice and relaxed, nice and open across your chest. Nice long neck, thinking about your posture. And shoulders out. Okay. So we'll take a fondue derriere. Fondue. And stretch. A second fondue. And stretch. One more. Now swapping over your feet. Now you're on the foot centre back. So we'll take a fondue derriere. And stretch, fondue, and stretch, one more, and stretch, and we'll finish off there. Okay, so that's your Batman fondue finished, okay? Um, we're now going to do our last exercise at the bar, which is called Grand Batmons. For this, we are going to have one hand on the ballet bar. So when we've got one hand on the belly bar, we want to make sure that our hips and our shoulders are staying nice and square all the time. We don't want one to be pulling in front of the other. Keep your hand that's on the belly bar nice and relaxed, and also we want it to be in front of us. If it starts to go behind us, then it's starting to affect our posture already, which of course in turn affects your balance. Okay? So keeping that hand in front of you, everything nice and square across your shoulders, hips stay nice and square, and this spare hand, we're just going to pop it onto our waist. And again, we want our elbow pointing to the side because if that hand starts to wander around the back, then that's starting to affect your posture again. So, elbow straight to the side, bar hand just a little bit more in front of you. And feet in first position. So a grand batman is very similar to our batman tendu that we did. We're keeping nice straight legs all the time. It's just a development of that. Now a true grand batman, um, this is normally the moment where the dancers have their legs up here. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to do the training step, which is called a divided grand batman. It's basically just teaching you the positions that we go through. Um, the height of your leg is not important. It's more important that we're keeping our placement and that we're finding our correct balance as well. And with straight legs. <laughs> so we're going to use our outside leg, which is your foot furthest away from the ballet bar. We're going to point our foot to the front and then keeping your legs, both legs straight, lifting your leg up, pointing it and closing it back in again. Then we'll go with the other leg, point and a lift and a point and close and change and lift and point 
and close. So that's three brawn back ones we've just done. And then to make sure that our weight's in the right place, we're going to take a little rise and down. Now the height of that rise is up to you. You can go all the way up to your demi point, but that does take quite a lot of stability and control in your ankles. So what you can use is what we call a quarter point, which is just a small lift of your heels. Now that is a very strengthening position. It's really good for getting stability in the ankles as well. So you can just take that small lift and down. Remember, we want to be pushing more towards our big toes rather than going back outwards onto our little toes because that's going to overstretch all the outside of your ankle. So think about a line going down through your knees all the way through the middle of your foot as you take your rise and down. Now we're going to do three grand back ones again. This time try and use your inside leg first. Point and lift and a point and close. And point and lift and point and close. And point and lift and point and close. Then we'll rise up and down. Okay, let's give it a go with music. So we're going to use our outside leg first of all. Okay. Outside leg. short amounts of time. I'm going to come across quite a few of those steps in a minute. You want to um, just, you will need a chair, so if you want to leave your chair there, but by all means uh, just go and have a quick drink of water just before we continue. Okay. Right, so for the next section, we are going to be doing um, a port de bras. Now I use I said port de bras at the beginning of the lesson with our plies. Port de bras, port de is carriage off and your bra is your arms. So we use this as a moment in the class to really get our arms um, looking beautiful. Okay, um, but today I'm going to actually incorporate it a little bit with some mime. Now I did do some um, mime in my second session where we worked a little bit on the ballet of Capelia and uh, Romeo and Juliet is another ballet as well that has an awful lot of mime in it. Um, this, now what we're going to do, I'm going to take it as a seated pour de bras just because of how hot it is today. Um, and we're just going to, um, the music is actually the music of um, Friar Lawrence. So this appears in the ballet when uh, Romeo and Juliet are getting married and it's the most beautiful music. Uh, this uh, little section of music actually comes from the middle of the piece of music. Um, and we're just going to explore a little bit of port de bras and also some mime in this section. So do you want to go and grab your chair? I'll go and get mine and um, we'll just uh, do our port de bras. Okay. I'll just come a little bit closer to the screen actually so you can see this a bit better here. Okay, so um, we want to make sure that we're sitting up nice and tall on the chair. Make sure you're not leaning against the back of the chair. You want your feet to be nice and grounded. Okay, so the music is very, very beautiful. Um, music, of course, from Romeo and Juliet is by Prokofiev, uh, the Russian composer. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing Dance of the Nights like, later on in the session, uh, but this is Friar Lawrence's uh, tune. So we're going to imagine... Uh, because at this moment in the ballet there is a lot of mime, so we're going to imagine that basically this is the marriage of Romeo and Juliet. So we're going to gesture and we're going to say that here is Romeo and he stood there. Okay, so we're taking our hand forward through what we call first position. Now first position, we actually have that with both hands. So first position is a nice rounded shape, it's an oval shape. And we want our shoulders to be nice and relaxed and elbows pointing to the side. We don't want our elbows pointing down. So elbows lifted. And then really it's passing through in a position 
that we called Demi Bra, which is a bit like, feels a bit like we're holding a tray. Um, but we've got our elbows supported. So those are the positions that we're passing through. So we're taking our right hand forward and out to Demi Bra and down. And then we'll welcome Juliet who stood at this side. One and two and three and down. Now this is the mime section. So lots of mime in ballet and um, it does help actually if you can follow to help you follow the story actually if you can understand that mime. Um, so this means love. Okay so you just put your hand on your heart. Very delicately placed. And then we're going to lift our hands up. So as we're saying that they both love each other. And they they come here to get married. Whenever you see that in a ballet, it's marriage. Okay, there's a lot of mime. Um, you the more and more you notice it um, in a ballet, there's you'll start to see a lots of mime in it. Um, so we're welcoming Romeo over here and down, and then there's Juliet over here and down. And then we'll do the mind to love. Opening your hands up and down, and they are going to get married here. And then we'll go again. So here's Romeo. Two, three, lowering down. And here's Juliet. And two, and three, lowering down. Love. Opening your arms out, marriage here. Okay, so let's give that a go with some music. Okay, so here's Romeo. because I really want to make sure we do as much as possible of Dance of the Nights. Um, so Dance of the Nights, um, a lot of you probably know this as being the music from The Apprentice. Um, very, very famous in the ballet. It's the moment when the Montagues and the Capulets meet and um, this is just probably one of the most famous scenes in the whole ballet. Actually, if you want to just grab a quick drink of water, I'll just play you the piece of music so that you can hear it. And if you want to mind your chair out of the way as well. is normally done um, with a partner. Um, when I've taught this to my silver swans in the past, we had so much fun learning this dance, we really did. Um, it is a male, a male partner and female partner. 
So because I do appreciate that we're dancing in our living rooms, um, I've adapted the choreography a little bit so that we can safely fit it into our living rooms. Um, the original choreography that I've based this version on is the Sir Kenneth Macmillan, which was of course the Royal Ballet's version. Um, when, the, uh, when this ballet was first of all premiered at the Royal Opera House, I believe it was um, Nureyev and Fontaine who danced it, and apparently they had 43 curtain calls. Um, uh, at the end of the concert and so much so that they had to bring down the safety curtain to get the people to leave from the audience um, so it has always been a huge success and it's such a core repertoire for any ballet company so because um, I do appreciate that we're, a lot of us are still isolating so we um, unfortunately don't have a partner to dance with I've adapted this choreography so we can learn a little bit of the men's part and a little bit of the ladies part as well because I've got to say that learning both parts of this dance is so much fun. So we're going to start at the back with our feet in first position. I'll just explain a little bit, a bit about the costume actually. Um, we're going to start off as dancing the man's role. Now for this the men they have on their tights and they have on a very very heavy costume for the upper part. It has the big puffy sleeves, and sometimes they have a mask on as well, sometimes a little bit of a moustache. Um, and it's a very, very grand entrance. The ladies, they have on the most beautiful dress that goes all the way down to the floor. And they have big sleeves as well. And there's sort of big sleeves that hang as triangles. So you'll see why that's important um, in a minute when we learn the ladies section uh, about the sleeves because of the way how we hold our arms. So we'll start off learning the men's section first of all. So, feet in first, we're going to have our right hand on our waist and your left hand is going to be down by your side, okay? The men's walk is very strong. We're going to lead with our heel. So we're just going to take a walk with your right foot and your left foot and then close your feet into first. And then we'll do the same again. Right foot, left foot, feet in to first. Let's do that again. I'm running out of space because of my camera. Um, I'll move back as far as I can. So right foot first, right foot and a left foot, feet into first and wait and a right foot and left foot, feet into first and wait. So as we've just got that little pause, we've taken our two walks, we've taken our walk with our right foot, our left foot. So as we close our feet into first, this spare hand at the side is going to go across and out, okay? So hands by, so feet in first position, and we're going to take a walk. One and a two, hand across and out. One and two, and across and out. So it's your right foot that leads, right hand down by your side. I'm so sorry because I realise I'm having to teach this in mirror image but also on my screen I'm seeing it not as a mirror image. Um, I just realised just before I did it the wrong way around. So um, feet in first position, right hand down by your side, right leg leads. One and a two and across and out. One and two and across and out. Lead that hand going out. You're going to acknowledge all of your audience. We're going to walk around, you've got eight counts. One and two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can walk on the beat of the music there. And from here, we're going to go into a bow and stretch. And then we're going to go again. Right foot and a left foot, hand across and out. Right foot and left foot, hand across and out, okay? And that is, it changes from that moment onwards. So we've got our two walks using our hand, two walks using your hand, and then we walk round one and two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we bow, and then we recover back up to go again. Okay, so at this moment in the ballet, all the men are actually in the lines, so this isn't a solo dance, this is very much a dance using all of the dancers in the ballet. Let's give it a go with music. Right foot lead and a right foot and left foot. Across and out. 
and a right, and left, across, and out, walking around, one, and two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and five. Let's go again, right foot, and across, and out, right, and left, and across, and out. Okay. Is now going to go onto your hips and we're going to step to the right and your left foot is going to go to the back on the ball of your foot. Now just turn around to face the back so you can see what I'm doing. I'm stepping, I'm putting my foot at the back, step putting my foot at the back. If you don't like that balance you can just take it as a sway and sway. Okay, so hands have gone on our hips, we're going step and foot and step and foot but then we're going to go step feet in to foot. So I'll just go from, we've just done our walks round, we've gone into our bow. So I'm going, walk and a walk and a hand and a hand and walk and walk and hand and hand and a step and foot and step and foot and step, feet into first. Okay, just a little story for you actually once when I did this, um, I once did this with a group for an event called Silver Sunday and we actually had our local mayor come down and I got to partner the, the mayor of, of Bury as while we were doing this and he, it, was, it was brilliant because he had on all of his official mayoral chains and it just looked brilliant doing this dance with all of his chains on it. It was very grand so you've got to imagine a really really grand outfit and, um, and that's uh, the best, it really gets you in the right frame of mind. It's very almost arrogant in a way, the way how you're walking. Okay, so let's add that on from the very beginning. Right foot and walk, and walk, hand across, and up, and right foot, and left foot, across. Walking round, one, and two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and five. Right foot, let's go again. One, two, across, and out. One, two, across, and out. Step to the side, step, move forward, and step, move forward, and step, feet in, so first. Okay, so from here now, we're going to open our other hand out, so take your left hand out, and we're just going to walk round to the left, all the way up to the back, and that's the men's section learnt. So that is, the entrance is done by the men anyway. And this is the moment now that the ladies come up. So this is where it's important now to think about the costume that the ladies was wearing because of your hand placement. If you put your left hand in the centre of your chest with your elbow lifted and your right hand just gently placed on top. And we really want to have our elbows supported because with that costume on, that means then that we can see these big sleeves that we have. Okay, so whereas the men were leading with their heels, as ladies we're leading with our big toe, which is what we would call in ballet a classical walk. So you're stretching your foot and it's rippling through. Okay, so hands in place and we're leading with our right foot first. One and two and three feet into first. We'll step to the right, put your feet into first. Step to the left, put your feet into first. And if you do those steps to the side, you can just gesture with that top hand as well. Very regal. And step and close. But we've still got our elbows lifted. So we've done the men's entrance, and all of a sudden, um, we're going to have a go then at the ladies' part. So we're going to go with our right foot. One and two and three, feet into first, step to the right, and close, step to the left, and close, okay? So as you're doing these walks on, you can really lead with your, because actually at this moment, the ladies are coming up between the channels of the men stand, as they just finished their dance. So we've done our walks, two, three, feet into first, step to the side, and close, step to the side, and close. I'll just quickly add on the next section so we just finished off to the end of a phrase. We're going to do two walks forward, one 
two. Now point your right foot to the side, feet into first, and point your other foot to the side. But as we do that point, first, point, we're just going to go onto a little bend. Point, bend, point, then we'll repeat it again. Two walks, and uh, point, first, point. So that ladies section from the beginning, very close to the end there, just in that section that I want to do today. So walking forwards, one and two, a hand three, he feet in first, step to the side, and close, step to the side, and close, then two walks, one, and two, and a point, first, point, walk, and walk, and a point, first, point, and then to finish off, we'll just walk round, back to the beginning, where we were before. So actually that little section at the end with the point, first, point, that's actually the men and the ladies dancing together there. So, just have a practice with the music, we'll do the men's section, and then we'll go straight into the ladies section. Okay, so hands on your hip, right foot leads with your heel, this is very arrogant, we've got some real swagger there. Right foot, one, and two, across, and out, one, and two, across, and out, walking around. Cool down. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed the session today. Um, I said keep commenting in the videos of whereabouts you're joining in from today and also what your experiences of ballets has today been your very, very first ballet class. Um, and I hope as well that you've enjoyed um, the Romeo and Juliet. So hopefully next time, um, Romeo and Juliet, you get the opportunity to watch it. I really do encourage you to go and watch it. You can understand a lot more about the mime in it. And also you'll know Dance of, Path of Dance of the Nights as well. Okay, so um, if you have enjoyed the Silver Swan session, Silver Swans is an initiative of the Royal Academy of Dance and there are ballet classes available all across the world. Um, if I've put a link in the information with this video. If you, or if you go to Google, type in become a Silver Swan and you'll find a map on the Royal Academy of Dance's website of your nearest Silver Swans licensee. Remember to always look out for the logo for an official Silver Swans licensee and i hope that you've enjoyed it okay i'll be back in august for another silver swan session in the royal voluntary service virtual village hall and thank you once again to the royal voluntary service for inviting me to do these sessions